it, it's it's very odd. Um, you're a little being, you know, like seven to fifteen years old. Um, I think my dreams were more based on curiosity. Mm. You know, till I was about 10, we lived in the sixth floor of a apartment building on a whole set of blocks in a section of Queens that didn't have anything green, no grass, no trees. There were a couple of trees down by the railroad tracks a few blocks away, but they were all dead. So, um, and my, my parents, uh, my father had started university in Greece before he immigrated to the U.S. in 1938 and was within a matter of months um, uh, recruited into the U.S. Army. So he spent a couple of years in the Panama jungles and then spent a few, uh, a year and a half landing on Normandy beaches, oh. not on D-Day, after D-Day, and going, marching through France and Germany. So by the time he got out, he'd met my mother, they'd gotten married, and there was no way he was going to be able to go back to university. So, like I said, he went into the restaurant business in New York City. Um, but he, he, and even though my mother just graduated from high school, they both in, loved to read. So I got literally infected with reading. And given that we were stuck in this apartment and going out to play wasn't always easy. I mean, I could do it. I had a few friends in the neighborhood. Um, some of the people that weren't my friends weren't, weren't very nice. So if I went out, there was a, an increased likelihood I might get beat up. Um, so I spent a lot of time indoors by myself. And uh, and my father felt bad for us. He got us, bought us one of these little small televisions in 1950. And... I started watching these serials that used to appear in the movie theaters, like um, Buck Rogers and, you know, the space things as well as Hopalong Cassidy. But in my reading, I got fascinated by biographies. Oh. So I started reading a lot of biographies um, of, you know, early U.S. adventurers, like, you know, in frontiers people like Davy Crockett. Um, but, you know, baseball figures and other historical figures, but also people who invented things. Oh. So, and my mother used to complain that even at the age of like six or seven, I would get curious about something like the toaster we had in the kitchen. And I would, if she wasn't around, I would bring it onto the kitchen table, take a screwdriver and start taking it apart to see how it would work. <laughs> The problem was, I could never quite put it back together. <laughs> so my curiosity had a high price. And we didn't have much money in those days. So my mother wanted to encourage my curiosity, but wanted me to keep my hands off of things, you know. And But I got fascinated by electricity and you know, all these kinds of things. And... Fortunately, like I said, in, in 1957, we'd moved out of New York City to Nassau County, which at the time was far out. Now it's not. Um, and the teachers there were much better. Although it was a working class community, I mean, almost everybody's parents worked by the hour. There were a few professionals, but very few. But... Um, the, the school system, the public school system, because we had the Nassau County Jail, Reformatory, um, the hosp county hospital, the county park, and half of, an, uh, of a U.S. Air Force Base, Mitchell Air Force Base, we had, without taxing the citizens much, we had a fantastic public school system. The, the, the teachers were paid so well. We had teachers who would drive every day out from Manhattan to teach in our schools and i learned um just i was talking to somebody the other day oh my my interns he's talking about his oldest daughter kind of wanting to really delve into math and she's trying to understand algebra at 10 and i think i was either 
10 or 11 when I discovered algebra. And it was like, oh my God. I mean, this is clearer than English and clearer than Greek. Those are my two languages <laughs> at the point. Um, and I, I felt, okay, so, and I, and all of a sudden that curiosity just kept driving me. Mm. 